Hi, it's uh, the last panel of the day before the, the closing keynote. Oh, we're in the sun. I'm with Rasmus, Zev, Remy, and Julien. Um, thank you. Uh, Julien was a release manager for PHP 5.5. Remy, Remy, excuse me, uh, maintains packages for Red Hat. Zev, you, you know Zev uh, from PHP 3, Zen Engine and all. And Rasmus, of course, from PHP since the beginning. Uh, we have around one hour, it depends on your questions. Um, it ends two days of talks with many conferences, three tracks, PHP 7 and everything. And so many subjects have been covered already. But we want to make sure that no questions go unanswered. So if you have questions, now is the time. They should appear right there, I hope. The hmm? What's the uh, of course, uh, hashtag for MPHP. Um, so there is this Twitter wall. Uh, we have two guests that we do not speak French. So we are going to do this in English. Of course, you, you must have noticed. Uh, still, you can ask your questions in French, and I'll try to translate. Uh, so, well, let's start. Is there already a first question? No, someone is happy because he's here. Hi, Mom. Uh, well, I'll try to start things up, if it's okay. What, there are three new Oh, yeah, three news. Maybe, maybe a first question. Oh, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> that's us already, and that's an, an, another cuckoo. Well. Um, first question, obviously, when is PHP 7 going to be released? It should have been a few weeks ago, then in a few days. What now? December 3rd, next week. Sure? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, PHP 7, but before PHP 7, there is PHP 5. PHP 5 is still alive. Um, more than uh, a lot, 60% of PHP 5 is unmaintained anymore, 5.3 and 5.4. There are like 4% of PHP 5.6, uh, which is um, the current stable. Um, is there some kind of need to maintain PHP 5 a bit longer, maybe for security fixes? I heard you talked about security just before, so maybe you're with me. Of course, it, it last um, PHP 5 is the, la, the last, PHP 5.6 is the last version of the 5 branch. Probably we could maintain it for security a bit, a, a bit longer than uh, usual. But this is not, for now, 5.6 is still support for uh, one year on half. Probably we have to discuss on to if you can possibly support it one more year or something like this. But we need to be discussed. There is no, nothing planned for now. OK, but it's a possibility. And I suppose it will depend on how quickly PHP 7 is adopted. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, we would need, on one hand, we think uh, that the migration to PHP 7 is relatively smooth. There are a few gotchas. You could see them in Rasmus's presentation, uh, but not that many. So theoretically, the migration could be very quick. Theories aside, we'll have to see what actually happens in real life. And if uh, we find ourselves in a situation in a year and a half's time where, like, I don't know, 10% of the user base has moved and 90% hasn't, uh, we're not suicidal. We don't want to uh, kill the, the ecosystem by stopping support for it. So we'll just see. But at this point, what's important, we, there's just uh, officially 18 months or a year and a half of uh, worth of life. So do try to prioritize migrating. OK, so we, we still have time, and we have time to migrate, and the migration should be easy. And you have a lot of motivation yeah. to migrate. It's that really fast. Those great performance features. increases. You can turn off half your servers. That would be great. Um, migrating f to 7 from 5 is quite easy. Um, how long do you think it will take before PHP 7 is required by frameworks, like Zen Framework, for instance? Uh, I think it's kind of a, a different version of the same question as before. I, uh, I, I don't know. I know that uh, already uh, with Zen Framework, for instance, we've, we're already using 7 uh, for um, performance uh, optimization profiling. So we care more about PHP 7 than we care about 5, even though 
nobody's quite using 7 yet. But in terms of actually quieting PHP 7 um, features, uh, I think that we're probably at least 6 to 12 months away, if not more. Uh, again, 5. Okay. Five is very, very popular. It's uh, probably close to 100% of the, the servers out there. It would take a while before, uh, we, before it makes sense for any framework to require PHP 7. OK. There was PHP 6 at a time, almost PHP 6 at a time. It was all about Unicode. Uh, there has not been much progress on that matter with PHP 7. We can now put smileys in, uh, in sentences, yes. But um, no full Unicode. There was a project with an uString class. I remember it has not been merged into PHP. Is this something that could happen with PHP 7.1 or 7.2? I mean, possibly, if we get a good implementation of something that makes sense and is okay. consistent. Um, there, there are very few things you cannot do in, in PHP in terms of Unicode. It's just not super smooth. It's not integrated in the language. You have access to everything in ICU, essentially, through the Intel extension. So anything you want to do, you can do. Um, it's just not as pretty as it might have been if the PHP 6 project had worked. But the PHP 6 project fell over because it was too slow and used too much memory, and people would much rather have the performance and the lower memory use um, with the trade-off of jumping through a few more hoops to do Unicode things. And I mean, that's basically what the community told us through this PHP 6 mod. All the developers who are part of the community told us that they were not interested in this approach to, to PHP 6. It would have been nice. I mean, you look at it sort of on paper, it should, hey, we should have this, right? It made sense to have, but it just fell apart because of lack of interest from everybody, both okay. the community and the developers didn't work. Okay, thanks. Uh, there are already a lot of questions, I think. Um, what have been the hardest things in the release process for PHP 7? There have been debates, battles, RFCs, votes, uh, sometimes with a lot of yes, sometimes quite hard, like for Scala type-ins, for instance. Uh, what, for you, has been the hardest? Scalar type in sense now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Plus one, plus one for me. Julian, maybe an idea about. I was reading the tweets. So oh, sorry. I tried to also read. <laughs> um, something really hard in PHP 7, the release process, maybe? Something which is hard? Which has had an impact on the release of PHP 7? Oh, for the release, n not nothing. It's always the same release process. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that we changed many things in the code uh, and the exceptions, which now are thrown as uh, fatal errors, are exceptions that require to patch many, many tests. Actually, uh, all our tests have been patched from 5 to 7, and we have something like nearly 10,000 tests in the default distribution, so that has been hard to do, uh, patching every test that uh, tested that uh, fatal error was uh, uh, emitted. Now we have to patch to check it's, uh, it's an error exception or something like that, so uh, that required a very huge patch, for example. Okay. And um PHP 7.0 is almost out. What's next? PHP 7.1, 7.2? Yeah, there'll, there'll be a 7.1. Okay. Uh, Probably before 7.2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Not sure. Of, you know, 7 is here before 6. Yeah. So yeah. nothing, uh, nothing uh, is I for sure. Probably not, definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, there are already some RFCs targeting 7.1, I think. Yep. Something interesting already? Mm, not to me, but yeah, there are okay. some there. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty small so far. We don't have any grand RFCs to okay. like, change everything. There are small tweaks here and there. Yeah, I, I had a slide in my presentation that I had to run through at the end. There was like this uh, Bart Simpson writing, I will focus on PHP 7, I will focus on PHP 7. I think we were quite successful at uh, actually making most of internals, the vast majority, focus on getting baking PHP 7.0 instead of going to the new shiny things, uh, the, the future ideas. Because you have to, to understand, for a lot of people on internals, PHP 7.0 is kind of old news. It's, you know, they're probably, they might have, uh, have, it, have it deployed already. 
uh, it's not the new shiny thing, it's the new shiny thing for the user. So it, it's quite an accomplishment, I think, that people still will kind of mature and manage to focus on getting it out the door and I mean, crossing fingers that it will come out indeed on December 3rd. Okay, so PHP 7.0.0, should be stable enough to be used in production already. No need to wait for one year or more for PHP well, 7. You need to of test. Course. You, need, you can't just okay. deploy it to production without testing. You have to go through and then do testing. Hopefully, you've been testing the release candidates. How many people have? Uh, yeah, I've, I've tested release candidates. That's not uh, enough. So, yes. so for the ones that have been testing release candidates, yes. Basically, if your tests are passing in the release candidates, 7.0, 7.0.0 .0 is your production release, go for it. Stick it straight into production. If 7.0.0 .0 is your first try of, of, of PHP 7, then you need to spend a little bit of time with it just to make sure that your code works and doesn't fall. O away. Only Chuck Norris upgrades to 7.0.0 directly without <laughs> testing first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've tested a few applications. I've started migrating some applications, and I've had like two bugs, one before because of uh, uniform variable syntax. You, you showed some example this morning. It was Magento one dots really old. Uh, I've got a, I've had another one with uh, sort and arrays. Uh, okay, so but that was probably only in a test case. Yeah. It was. Yeah, because test cases tend so when you sort the sorting algorithm in PHP seven has changed slightly. So when when two items um, compare as equal then if you have an array full of items that are equal as, as per the comparison function, the sort order of those items are not defined, is not defined. But it had an order in PHP 5. That order has now changed. So if you simply just copied and pasted a sort order from PHP 5 into your unit test, then that unit test now fails on PHP 7. Of course, this should no way affect your real production code because the order of equal elements should be irrelevant in production code. If it isn't, then you have a problem. Um, but yes, that will cause unit test failures, but probably not production failures. Oh, it was only in a test. Yeah. So I, I want to add, uh, first of all, I completely agree with Rasmus. If you've been testing the, the RCs, then you, and you know, assuming your tests were positive, um, you can probably just upgrade to 7.0.0 when it's released. Uh, if you haven't, um, I wouldn't uh, just, you know, try to upgrade to 7.0 with some minimal testing, making sure that, you know, the home page works and then, you know, you're good to go. You should understand it, PHP 7 has pretty much undergone uh, a brain transplant, uh, almost. It's, uh, it's supposed to do exactly the same job or almost exactly the same uh, behavior um, with just uh, a lot less memory consumed and uh, a lot faster. And a lot of things change for that. Our ability in the PHP project and also with the, with the help of you guys to, to truly test all of the possible scenarios uh, before it gets released is, is really, it's, it's limited. It's not completely there. We will really get the widespread testing uh, only once the GA is out, uh, the, the release is out. And um, therefore, you know, definitely you should, either way, even if you're upgrading in a year's time, you should be testing. But especially if you're upgrading to one of the early versions, make sure that you test your stuff thoroughly before you do. Okay. Um, compiling PHP is not quite easy. Many people use distributions like Red Hat, like Debian. When will PHP 7 be in those distributions, or are there some alternatives to install from? I think uh, some famous repository, I think, at, uh, of .deb uh, is uh, already having uh, PHP 7 uh, package. Uh, my repository have already um, uh, per, this uh, RPM of, uh, of PHP. And I think um, thing I've changed a lot in enterprise distribution because uh, people can't stay 10 years with the same version now. It was, it was true. Uh, a few years ago, but it's not true anymore. People want to use the latest framework and want to use the latest PHP version. And especially with, with new path of PHP 7, people are going to want to, sh to shut down half of the server for, to, to save money. So yes, I think PHP 7 will be very soon in enterprise distribution. I can give you any date, I'm not allowed to, but I think it will be available very soon. 
month. Well, we, we hope so. Personally, I'm using Debian, so I'm using PHP 7 from .deb, and uh, the RCs are quite up to date and work well. They work well, actually. So uh, you can already pretty much use PHP 7 on your test servers and in production in a few days or weeks. Mm, PHP 7 has great performances. Of course, we, we've seen the graph, we've seen the test, and we've done some ourselves. Um, what's next? You mentioned JIT, and you said it didn't work for real apps. Will, will it be tried again? Could it work now that memory has been reduced? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we'll definitely try again uh, to see whether, again, to remind uh, those of you who haven't attended my session, the whole thing that later became the, the foundation for PHP 7 was actually supposed to be step one towards JIT, um, reducing memory consumption, which we, uh, we, which we were led to believe was the main reason that JIT wasn't giving us performance boost. And then, to our surprise, uh, completely to our surprise, by the way, it resulted not just in a marginal performance boost, but a very substantial one just by itself without even reintroducing JIT. But now that we have it, uh, I think we will definitely review um, or essentially redo uh, JIT um, to see whether this theory uh, holds water and whether the, really now we can uh, gain even more through using JIT. The unfortunate part is that it's essentially requires a rewrite. The, the old JIT was based on the PHP 5 code base. Uh, PHP 7 was so much uh, changed underneath that uh, we would have to uh, throw away most of the, mostly all of the code. Not, not the lessons, maybe, but uh, most of the code that was implemented. Um, but I, I definitely think that uh, we're going to try it again. But that's not a problem. Dimitri's a machine, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a sort of, a sort of a machine, yeah. OK. Um, I've got a question for you, Julian. It's, it has not been asked there, I think, but uh, I'm curious about the answer. You did a talk yesterday about RMing. My question is, what does an RM do? What is your job? How do you do it? It deletes files, doesn't it? Uh, it's <laughs> supposed to release files also. <laughs> I'm talking about the Unix RM, but OK. Yes, so RM is a release manager, so it's, uh, it's uh, about uh, easily, in one sentence, it's about getting, pulling the code and pushing archives uh, that people can uh, download on php.net uh, for a new release. Uh, should it be a, a major, a, a minor, or, or a micro version? So uh, that's the job. It happens uh, every month, actually twice per month, because we got RCs as well. So it's just about... Um, uh, being sure that we are pushing the next version and that it it, it complies with our uh, quality uh, rules, so no bugs, no blockers, no security issues from uh, everyone's eyes, and we are human beings, so sometimes we make mistakes as, as well, but uh, basically that's, uh, that's the job. Okay, thanks. Uh, there is a question that has been asked at least twice. Um, there was HHVM. HHVM, and PHP.net has not used HHVM as a base for PHP 7, there has been PHP NG. Has there been talks between HHVM and PHP to put some effort in common? Specification. I think uh, we we are there is a project you you, you talked about in your in your talk yesterday. Uh, there is a, a project which is now written about uh, the language specification. And this is something which is uh, shared between HHVM and PHP. We have to, sh to share the specification. Yeah. So go to php.net slash spec to, to find it. And not just share between these two. If there are other implementations, they should use the spec as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping we'll see more implementations. You look at Python, you see, I don't know how many, 10 different implementations of Python. So I wouldn't mind seeing, seeing more attempts yeah, at PHP. There, there have been a few projects for PHP, like <coughs> EPVM, I think. Yeah. But it's not really no, nice. so, so the problem with these efforts is that it's really easy. No, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it, it's not yeah. that. It's relatively easy to get to 80% language coverage, right? That takes you, like, I don't know, 80% of your time, right? Then the other 80% of your time gets you the next 5%. <laughs> Then you need another 80% of your time to get another five. I mean, that last 20% is hard. Um, and and that, that's what's holding 
these projects up. You get to 80%, and you can sort of kind of run some code, which is not useful. Okay. There's, there's actually, I think, there are actually two other elements of cooperation that happen. First of all, there is some, um, not exactly sure what to call it, but technology sharing. Let's put it this way. Others could call it plagiarism, and it goes both ways. Uh, you know, HHVM essentially embeds parts of PHP in it in order to support extensions, uh, and it bought a bunch of ideas from uh, the, the PHP.NET implementation. We certainly bought some ideas um, uh, from HHVM in some of the PHP 7 optimization, which, by the way, in turn were, in many cases, bought from other languages. So. Uh, in terms of technology, we're not kind of working in a dark room and not, not looking at the other implementation, and the same holds true for the HHVM team. And the second element is that there are people on the HHVM team, and most notably uh, Sarah Gorman, uh, that are very active on the PHP.net side of things and are not just uh, kind of writing the spec, but actually influencing the spec and any features. So that's another sort of cooperation. Okay, so there is Communications and yeah, cooperation the, between the yeah. projects. Yeah, there's uh, cross pollination, I would call it. Okay, yeah. so everything's all right. Um, speaking about HHVM and ACK, they have async, asynchronous uh, <coughs> embedded in the language. In PHP, there are some projects on user land like uh, React and iSQL, I think. Uh, and the idea is starting to get some traction, people are looking to it. Um, Will there someday, in the near future, maybe be something in core for async? I mean, we have lots of async support um, via libevent and uh, on just straight async support in the MySQL calls, Postgres, you can do async queries, uh, multi-curl, um, straight select, so you can, you can send off tons of asynchronous queries and get the responses back. So on most things that people actually need to do in real world live web applications, it's already there. It's been there since PHP 5, right? Um, it's not well advertised. When I tell people you can do MySQL queries in parallel, they say, how, what, huh? And that's been there for five, six years, I think, via MySQL ND, and they just haven't looked. So I, I think a lot of people who, who say they need it haven't actually tried to solve their problem with what we already have. Okay. And, uh, I'm guessing the same, you might, you might say the same with multi-threading. Today, PHP, it's one process, one request, and all. But more and more people are using PHP on the command line, in cron, uh, some long-running jobs. We have the pthreads extension. Now that works quite well from CLI. Yeah, but you have to compile PHP with ZTS still? Yes, you so, do. Yeah. Well, that's a distro problem, that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I saw a mail a few days ago, a few days ago about a project which was using parallelization with, from OpenMP, I Open think. OpenMP, yeah. I, th I think that's kind of cool. Um, now, I actually think there's a step beyond OpenMP that I think is cooler. There's something called OpenACC. And OpenACC is a library for accessing the GPU cores in case they're available. So I could see five years from now that every server, every web server in the data center has a, a GPU stuck in there as well. So you get another 5,000 tiny micro cores for doing parallel math stuff and doing maybe SHA calculations, maybe doing, I don't know, any, anything math related. These GPU cores are super, super good at. And if you can do those in parallel via OpenACC, that would be cool. OpenMP is less interesting to me because it's all about making efficient use of all the cores in the machine. If you're writing a CLI thing, you're writing a desktop application and you have 24 cores, obviously you want to use all those cores in that one app that you're running. For a web application, you're already using all your cores because you're getting concurrent requests from the web server. So you're already running 24 concurrent PHP processes that are using all the cores. So OpenMP doesn't really help a web application. OpenACC might because these are cores that are sort of outside the normal cores. You have like extra cores for extra little parallel punch. But that's, we're nowhere near that. No, no web server in the world has a GPU installed today. Yeah, may, maybe in five years uh, for PHP, I, I PHP hope 8, maybe. I would love to see, like, we have 30,000 cores available to, on our web server now. Like, cool, that would be awesome. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, you work at Etsy, Erasmus? I do. You have migrated to PHP 7, of course. 
Uh, no. No. I, no. Oh, I, come I, on. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I do wait until releases, and I'm, and I'm actually pretty conservative. And especially now, because it's shopping season in the US, we cannot make any major changes until after the new year. So there's no way I can migrate to PHP 7 until at least January. Yeah, it's kind of the same in France. I've seen people test with RCs, but they will not do anything before Christmas, and they will wait January, February, hopefully for 701 or 2, maybe if so, with some bugs fixes. Okay. Um, there, there was one, one question about the, the future, of course. Uh, what might be the next killer feature of PHP? Of course. Next core feature? No, killer, killer feature is the next I, I big hope thing. The JIT. I hope the JIT is the next killer feature. JIT? I think. I mean, I, I like performance. So there are object oriented folks in the room that probably have some, some wish about some specific pet object-oriented feature. I don't some care. Tilde slash uh, backslash something. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with Asmus. I think that uh, JIT could certainly be interesting. I think that, uh, I think we would look into async, uh, even though uh, it's completely true that uh, you can do most of the interesting use cases that uh, you may want to do today, you can already do. Um, but that's another direction where it may make sense, uh, again, given the eyes of Node. Um, so that's another, uh, another possibility. That's, uh, but, but usually you can tell about the killer features of PHP once they're proposed and implemented, and it's kind of difficult to predict them ahead of time. Yeah, because uh, the, um, the process for new features, how does it work? Someone comes with an idea and it doesn't comes out of an at, I suppose. So can you, okay. can you say a few words about the process when someone wants a new feature in PHP, how it is implemented, how it's voted and all? Uh, yes, we have a process which is written on how to get new features into PHP. It's all written under our wiki, wiki.php.net slash RFC should be. Uh, so basically the, the guy has to uh, write uh, an RFC, present uh, his ideas, and uh, try to uh, onboard people with him uh, to support the ID, uh, because PHP is used by many people and developed by many people as well. So uh, y you can't you can't come and say, oh, I want this in the language, and and tomorrow it will be in the language. That's not possible. But you you have to to just uh, start perhaps by a mail presenting yourself and presenting the ID and then you get feedback. It's, it's not that easy to get a new feature in because you have to get feedback. You have to think about this feedback and then review your copy and then fix things people don't really like and then finally call for a vote and then the vote will say yes or no. And if it's no, it's not lost because usually there is a patch that has been written and implementation, it's in a branch, it's not lost. It can be postponed for the next version perhaps or things like that. We, we have seen that for scholar typings. It was not really accepted at the beginning and there has been many versions before it finally went to Same PHP 7. for namespaces that should be part of PHP 5.0 back in time but just was just uh, taken out of PHP just before the release and then waiting several years to have them finally back in 5.3 so that's Okay, so basically, if you have an idea, you go to internals, the internals mailing list, you write about your idea, you explain, you present it, and if you have positive feedback, you write an RFC, but you have to write a patch with it or find some help to write a patch? Yes, whether you, you already have the patch with the ID, the implementation, should it be just a draft, or uh, if you don't have the patch, so you should onboard people that could be interested in your ID. You know, it's open source. It's somehow you work on the things you like working on somehow. So uh, if you can have a guy interested and that know the code, they can start a draft. And uh, we've seen many things like this with uh, Nikita implementing IDs, which was not his own IDs, but uh, nice IDs as well to take. So it's, uh, it's open source model. Okay, thanks. You want to add something there? No? no? I just saw the question about anonymous variables, whether we're going to support well, if, them. If you, want, if you want to answer yeah, so the question, we, we, we support them do. already. They're there. 
You just can't see them. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that anyone on the stage knows what uh, anonymous variables are. Uh, so I wasn't if, sure. If, if, uh, if you can explain to us what they are, we'll tell you. I thought I didn't see that question. I, I cannot explain that question. So no, it was a joke. I hope maybe. So yes, I mean we support them since PHP one, right? It yeah. supported them as well. Variable variables, <laughs> right? Dollar dollar var, unlimited dollar dollar dollar. You can put as many as you want. Make it super anonymous. From left to right, no, of course. And, and just call the random function to come up with a name and put in a random value and you're yeah. good. Uh, you, you get an anonymous class in, to a name and then you can instantiate it. We saw that yesterday. Sure. I'm quite surprised. Um, the, the last question is about some old code in PHP. Uh, there, are, there is some old code in many places. Maybe the, the stream layer far is not maintained anymore, I think. Not really maintained. I, I don't consider that old code. There's a much older code than yeah, that yeah, yeah. hiding in PHP. <laughs> uh, is there some project to clean that code? Would it be interesting, first of all? Clean it in, much, in which way? I mean, we'd love to have more maintenance of the far code, definitely. The original author has kind of disappeared. Um, so if someone wants to step up and, and Update it and fix any little bits that are missing. Great. Okay. Um, we can't really a lot of this old code. We can't really get rid of. We can't just get rid of far, right? Composer would break, for example, right? Um, and many other things. So we kind of have to limp along sometimes. And it, it's an open source project. We rely on volunteers, and it's a very wide project with a lot of different pieces to it. And over time, naturally, we lose some volunteers. We gain other volunteers that have other interests. And it's just a natural part of, of open source is that some pieces of a large project will get less attention over some periods of time. And I know I, we can't really have a project to clean it because it means like assigning someone and I don't have employees. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it would we, absolutely not be fun for the guy no, who I mean, would I do mean, that. It's, it's not a fun job to clean up somebody else's code, especially if you have no interest at all in it. Right? None of us here can assign anyone to, to just go do that. It's just not a thing we can do. So. We, we can tie. I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Hey, so, you. So, so it's your job. Anyone wants to clean some old code? <laughs> some old C code? Um, I was thinking about some, some types. Where we've had uh, Scala type ins in PHP 7. There is still the, the old resource type from PHP 4, maybe 3. Not sure I was around at that time. Is there some project to remove some resources? There has been for GMP, I think. GMP is a good example. Yeah. Uh, will there be something for streams, for, exa for example? Uh, I would love streams to be refactored in the next session. I already told Nikita about it. And uh, the, the, the resource type, there have been ideas about uh, getting rid of it and turning it into, into object and into classes because we've handlers, object handlers, nowadays we can do many things. There has been ideas and that is possible to do, but definitely not before a major because it will break user land. So that if that must be done, that won't be done before an 8.0 or something. And maybe like keep the resource type in PHP 7 and deprecate it in 7.1 or 7.2. It's, it's not really a type. You, you keep calling it a type. It's, yeah. it's not actually a type because it's, it's not Just one resource is not interchangeable with another resource. I mean, each one is a unique thing, right? So, and people have asked for like a, an actual scalar type for a resource, which also doesn't make much sense because if you say, "Hey, my thing takes a resource," well, what does that mean? Is it a MySQL connection? Is it a file pointer? What, what is it? Right? It doesn't make any sense. So the keyword has been reserved, I think, for seven zero. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> As a class name, yes. Uh, with, with mixed and numeric and some others. Definitely, perhaps. <laughs> um, I've heard uh, earlier in the day, and there have been some questions about it. WordPress is 25% of the web, and there's been an announcement today or yesterday. They were now using Node for some parts of the admin, I think. I, the way I read the announcement, I don't know. I have no inside info on it. The, the node part is pretty small. It, it's mostly in the browser. You're using React. So the, it's an admin interface. It's an admin um, UI for managing your, your WordPress backend. And most of that is still in PHP, MySQL stuff on the backend. There is a piece of it in node, a small piece of the API, and then a whole bunch of front-end UI work in 
Okay, so and WordPress is still a PHP project I, and will gain As far hugely. as I could tell from their announcement, yes. But, but they okay. have this front end really fast UI that you can now use and it works on your phone and stuff. And that's all in React with a little bit of Node back okay. end. Um, after WordPress, did PHP as, as a group, as internals, PHP developers work with projects, some open source projects, to, s to see how PHP 7 would work with them? Like, uh, did someone go to MediaWiki and work with them to, to earn migration? Uh, it, it's, a, it's an interesting example that you picked because Facebook worked very closely with them. So uh, even though one of uh, the former people from my team starts, uh, works there, uh, right now I don't think they have kind of the bandwidth, specifically uh, Wikipedia, I don't know, MediaWiki don't have the bandwidth, the mental bandwidth to reevaluate the decision they, they took to switch to HHVM. Um, I, I know that uh, I personally in uh, Dimitri, we uh, had some exchanges with these from the Drupal project and Drupal 8 uh, we, we, you know, they certainly tested it very thoroughly on PHP 7. Same goes to uh, Magento 2 that was recently released. They also tested it on PHP 7. Um, to be honest, we didn't have to do that much other than, you know, telling them it's so much faster, it consumes a lot less memory uh, to give them the motivation to, to try it out. Because they, they do expect that some of the, definitely some of the bigger users that uh, that are thinking about how they can shut down half of their servers uh, would be uh, would want to migrate quickly. Okay, so, so that was enough motivation for them. We didn't have to kind of go door to door. To door. Uh, and another element is that I think we have a lot of um, today the 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 crowd on internals is a not a lot more vibrant and, and uh, I'm missing the word and diverse. Uh, compared to even a few years ago. So we have actually a lot of people, P3 developers, who are not C, C, C developers, uh, that are actually representing or unofficially representing all sorts of projects that are right on internals. And uh, that uh, helps also bring the new versions and kind of the message of the new versions into those projects a lot faster than compared to the past. Okay, uh, speaking, speaking on this, we have a, a lot of people in the community, people who do not contribute to internals, but there are many more people, you, you said once, um, most of the community never goes to meeting, never go to conference, never speak on internals. Uh, what, what can the community do to help PHP Evolve, to indicate what they would like, to give returns, to test maybe? Is there something we as a community can do to help PHP Evolve? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole sort of list. It's the, it really depends on someone's interests. We need help everywhere, essentially, right? I mean, you can go to bugs.php.net slash random. And you got a random unclosed bug. And then you can see if you can figure it out and see, is this a real bug? Half the bugs that are filed are not actual bugs. It's just a user being confused. So if you have lots of experience with PHP, you can help us close some of those and say, no, no, this is just you reading the documentation wrong. This bug can be closed. Just someone trying the example and, and, and adding that comment helps us because it means we, have, we can parse these bugs quicker and get to real bugs instead of having to try to figure out big, long, convoluted examples and break them down. So that's a really easy way to contribute. If you like writing, technical writing, we have lots of documentation that needs to be written. The spec could use help in, in writing pieces of the spec and getting the spec up to speed to PHP 7 for writers. If you love testing, yes, tons of things still need tests written. Not tons, but there's still lots of improvements to be done in the, in the test area. Um, basically, anything, any skill that you have can be useful to us in one way or another. Um, and Translating the manual? Uh, that's yeah. Actually, for the manual, you, you go to the manual online, and on every page on the manual, there is a small edit link next to report a bug. If you see a mistake in the manual or in the French translation, actually, even a typo, you click on edit, you can submit a patch, someone will re review it and, it, and you will have contributed to PHP. Yeah. Or even just curating all the notes that get added. So we have this little, very bad admin interface but that we can go through and we can say, well, this note makes no sense, get rid of it and stuff. And we have 
hundreds of new notes added to the documentation every single day, and, and we don't have that manpower really to, to edit them all. We have a few poor souls who have been doing this for years, and it's a very thankless job because nobody realizes that there are actually people that have to sit and read through some of all this crap that gets <laughs> added to the manual. You don't want to answer, to answer this one, I suppose. <laughs> so basically, you do, not, uh, you do not need to be a C developer to contribute to PHP. There are many ways to help, like writing tests. Writing tests, mm -hmm. it's, it's writing PHP, actually. Writing yes. PHP in a text file. Yes, and yes. T t t p PHP tests are written in PHP. Uh, and we have a, a guide, if you don't know how to do, uh, under qa.php.net, slash I don't remember. Um, you can read the other test and get inspired and, and yes, add, add more tests where, where we need tests. Um, adding more tests uh, to cover new uh, parts of code which has not covered uh, just help us. And we have gcove. I don't know if it's up to date, but I think it is. Uh, we have gcove.php.net, so our code coverage uh, with red lines not covered and, and green lines are covered. So adding tests is also a way which does not require any C programming uh, uh, knowledge and no. it, uh, it helps a lot. And I think an even easier way you can contribute, go to the user group meetings wherever you live. And if there is no user group meeting, start one. And actually going to a local user group meeting is a great way to start as a speaker. You speak in front of 30 people maybe, or 20 or 15 or 50, and it's, it's yeah. great after that. And then, and then one day I can retire <laughs> and not fly all around the world all the time. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure if you are a bit shy or if you want some mentoring, just ask around and you will find people to help you to, to give a talk in your local UG, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but I, I think actually it even goes beyond that because not just people who contribute directly or indirectly to internals, uh, or even people who speak at user groups are contributing to, to PHP. I think to a large degree, the reason PHP is so popular, um, I mean, I think the technology is great, of course, uh, but the fact that so many people are using it and are actively sharing code and ideas with others, um, and actively it doesn't have to be people going to a user group and actually presenting, it's even just going to a user group and talking to other people, writing blog posts, um, responding on mailing lists, uh, anything that you do that goes beyond just you and your keyboard and your screen uh, is contributing to, to the P3 project in some way. So um, the more we can encourage people to go beyond to share code, to uh, share uh, knowledge, um, the better it is for the project. And you definitely don't need to know C for that. Yeah, and you can contribute to downstream projects, to, to projects yes. fully in PHP. So the projects you use every day, if you work with Magento, with Symfony, yeah. with everything, just yes. contribute to. H having said all that, we would still like more C developers <laughs> to come and help us. We need three more Nikitas, at least five, if we can find them. <laughs> uh, how many active contributors for PHP today, do you know? That's, that's a hard question because it, it varies up and down. And what does active mean? Committed code in the last week, last month, last year, last five years? Well, uh, how many people committed code for PHP 7, for, for instance? Did, did anyone count? I don't think we've counted. I would say in the... 250. 250. Okay. There, there is room for more. There's always, yeah, I mean, some of those is a single line somewhere, right? I mean, and other, others are like Dimitri. It's got thousands and thousands <laughs> of lines of code, right? So, um, but yeah, we could always use more. Okay. Um, you said uh, the number of CPU operations went from 9 billion to 2 billion on one year, one year slides. Does it mean there has actually been so much code removed? Has two thirds of PHP code been removed? No, I, I think. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, uh, I, I can't, I don't know for certain, you know, how much code was removed. I don't think we, we removed all the code. <clears throat> I think we made code a lot more optimal. 
um, compared to what it was. It not, it's not that when you're going to look at the C source files, you're going to see that they shrunk from, I don't know, 100,000 lines into 30,000 lines, but it's, it's much more compact code. Um, and, and by the way, the nine point whatever billion or the almost 10 billion uh, figure, that's already PHP NG. That's after kind of the diet that it went, the initial diet from PHP 5.6. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what the number is for PHP 5.6, but I'm assuming it's quite a lot higher than that, so. Okay. You could also look at it negatively that we were just idiots and we were waiting, wasting so many CPU cycles and now finally we've reached a, uh, oh, a reasonable PHP number, two and a half PHP billion. PHP 3 was so slow, is it possible? <laughs> It you was should, probably in the trillions back you then. You should have seen PHP 1 then. <laughs> Actually, I tested a bit of PHP 2 uh, a few weeks back, and I had a long sample of code. I copy-pasted it, used it in PHP 7, changed one byte, one character in the okay. PHP the 2. Open tag. <laughs> no, it was uh, the alternative syntax for while loops. There was a semicolon, and now it's a colon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, except that, the code works. Yeah. From PHP 2, it was. But it's much faster now. <laughs> I, sure, I sure hope so. My first this is the real killer feature of PHP. Yeah. I think it's compatibility. Yeah. Well, if you, if you had to change, if you could change one thing, breaking all compatibilities you want, what would you change? You can change anything. Maybe um, the uppercase, the case sensitivity, case insensitivity um, part, which I had a good reason for initially, but that has not stood the test of time. In 1995, people couldn't agree whether HTML tag should be uppercase or lowercase. They were back and forth, and PHP at that point was just a templating language that was supposed to fit in with the existing HTML tags. So I didn't want to be part of this religious argument between uppercase, lowercase HTML, so I just let people say, okay, what well, the PHP tags, the template tags you put in there can be either uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter. You if, started a new religion, essentially. Uh, well, yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I basically, and I also thought at the time, if your tag only differs in case, then it's gonna be really confusing. So I, I, I wasn't going to allow having an uppercase or a mixed case and a lowercase meaning refer to three different things in, in the code itself, which is still partially quite true. I mean, if you have, if you define methods that only differ in case, that's hard to read code, man. Okay, you, you want to add something? Yeah, I, I think another, that, that, that would definitely also be one of, the, one of my choices. The other one is, I think, uh, the consistency uh, in sting function and not just uh, essentially, they were introduced gradually some of them kind of trying to maintain compatibility with C, some of them, you know, came from a lot of different directions. The bottom line is that today it's a bit of a spaghetti, uh, and uh, the only way to know how they behave is basically to memorize it. Uh, there's not that much logic to it. So uh, if we could go back in time and kind of introduce a consistent uh, API that is not necessarily one-to-one -one mapping with C, I think it would be a good idea. It may be still possible, maybe not by, poorly not by changing those APIs, because that's going to be uh, too much of a bakage, but maybe introducing a layer on top of them. Uh, that is not something that uh, we can rule out. I think and that's, uh, that's, that's a question that's often asked, actually, it was, uh, it was asked a bit, uh, a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And we just PHP cannot change that. It would break everything right now. Yeah. We, we have, I think, two or three more minutes, so one or two last questions, three minutes. Uh, I'm seeing eight new results. Uh, PHP 8, uh, well, PHP 8. There was 10 years, 11 years between PHP 5 and PHP 7. What about PHP 8? Sounds like a math question. <laughs> Three years between uh, two and, uh, actually, two was released after three, or? No? Never mind. <laughs> so three, three to four was two years, uh, four to five was four years, five to seven, which is also interesting, five to seven was 11 years, 
how many years it's going to take for Peach V8 to come out. Ba basically, we do not want to wait another 10 years for a new release. And now there is a cycle <coughs> for release with a minor version every year, I think. Yeah, but five years. So I, maybe five years mm -hmm. before Peach V8? I, I think, though, the situation today may be different. I'm not sure because, uh, because Peach V7 was, again, this fairly big engine rewrite. And that was the case for Peach V3 and 4 and 5 uh, and now 7. Uh, technically, the way the uh, release process is defined, uh, a new version is warranted or actually needed when we break compatibility. So it may be, and of course I'm very hopeful that we will have some new shiny thing like in the form of JIT or, or Async or both or something else. Uh, but even if we don't, at some point probably we would want to break compatibility. And at that point we will need an 8. Uh, until then, uh, until we need to break compatibility, then we can continue with 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, and I, personally, I don't think we have the motivation to just, you know, <laughs> break uh, compatibility intentionally just in order to release an 8. Yeah, we, we can have performance improvements in minor versions. We've seen it uh, we, for we, we definitely years. will. We definitely yeah. will have in 7.1. I'm sure it will be faster than, than 7.0. Okay. One last question, maybe? One new result? That's Perfect timing. <laughs> Hope it's a question. Uh, any thoughts about saying like test to upper? Oh, new question about syntax. Being able to call a method on a string, like strings as classes. I see may maybe. maybe. <laughs> well, write an RSC, write a patch, and maybe. It's already done. <laughs> it's already it? done? Yes, Nikik has, uh, has an extension okay, for well. that. But... Maybe Nikita asked the question? No? <laughs> uh, you did an extension for yes, that? Yes, he's got an implementation okay, so doing that. That works under 5. That was a proof of concept under 5. I don't know if it's ported under 7, but it... Yet. Not yet, but it works under 5. It does not uh, delete the functions, but it hacks into the engine to... to, 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 to take care of, of the things, and he, he added such things, but I don't know if it's a good idea for, for PHP, but anyway. <laughs> well, I think it's it then, with, with a nice photo, thanks. Uh, I want to thank you all for, for answering, for being there in Paris with us. Thank you all for listening and asking questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And see you next year. Right? I am. Uh...